Welcome to the Accelerize webinar today. This webinar will focus on array fire for defense and intelligence applications. This webinar uses uh, integrated audio, and the webinar will be recorded, uh, so be aware of that. And we also have integrated chat and question and answer features. As we present the material for this webinar, we invite you to ask any questions you may have in the chat window, and we have uh, people that will monitor that and make sure that we can answer those questions in the course of this webinar. So feel free to ask us any questions that you may have. At Accelerize, we're involved in productive GPU software. Uh, our belief is that you should be able to, to do more through software development while coding less, that you don't need to spend a lot of time in hassling with low-level details uh, when you can build your applications on top of great uh, fundamental tool building blocks, and we'll talk about that. To get started, I wanted to share a, a slide as we were thinking about ways to talk about how fast GPUs are for defense and intelligence applications. We came across a slide uh, from NVIDIA that really speaks to how people are using GPUs in defense today, and we see the same thing in our company over the last five years that people are using GPUs for satellite Im imaging, for video enhancement, for aerodynamics and CFD kinds of codes, computer vision, signal processing, and all sorts of stealth and antenna design problems. Really any engineering and scientific application that requires a significant amount of compute, and by significant I mean if it runs a, a little slow on your CPU, then you can accelerate that through GPU computing. Also in that same NVIDIA presentation, we were uh, thinking about all the people that use GPUs in defense and aerospace, and we found uh, a slide that NVIDIA presents about people using GPUs, and in fact, the same companies and organizations that are using GPUs uh, have also started to use uh, accelerized tool sets. So you'd say all, all of these companies here uh, likewise are using accelerized products to help make life easier. So we offer basically two software tools to make GPU computing uh, easier. One is called ArrayFire, and that's the focus of today. It's the world's largest GPU library, uh, meaning it has functional support for all sorts of aspects of science and engineering. Uh, it's available in C, C++, Fortran, and Python, and it supports CUDA and OpenCL devices. And then we have Jacket that's also uh, a, a GPU library, but Jacket is specifically designed to be interoperate with the MATLAB application, and it's uh, so it's only supporting of uh, interoperability with MATLAB, and it supports CUDA and OpenCL as well. Uh, here are some of the Accelerize uh, success stories that we share. Uh, as you can see, people from all sorts of application domains, whether it be life sciences or uh, defense or energy, uh, are using GPUs and Accelerize software to make their life easier and to make performance much higher. Uh, specifically in here we see uh, System Planning Corporation uh, doing some radar imaging and BAE Systems uh, with a uh, geolocation tracking algorithm, both of which were able to get great speed ups uh, through Accelerize software. How, what does ArrayFire look like? When we talk about ArrayFire, really the main focus is on ease of use while maintaining top-notch performance. The way it looks and the ease of use is described uh, or visible through this slide. It's simply a single uh, header file that you can include in your program with one namespace. We call it the AF or ArrayFire namespace. And then it offers a new data type, Array, listed in green. Uh, you can declare variables within your program as an array uh, data type, 
And then any subsequent operations that you perform on array variables will, will run on the GPU. You don't need to worry about the nitty gritty uh, details of how to write GPU uh, device code. Rather, you can simply use standard math and science functions on these array variables and achieve acceleration of your program. So again, you simply include uh, the header file at the top, and then you declare a variable as an array, and that sends that variable to the GPU. So in this case, we're just declaring that the x variable is a matrix of, uh, or we have two array variables, x and y, that are both vectors of random numbers generated on the GPU. ArrayFire supports an array container type that the central type. You, you always declare things as arrays within ArrayFire, but those containers can be of double precision or Boolean or complex or single precision, and all of the standard uh, data types that GPUs support are supported on uh, within ArrayFire. ArrayFire is also designed to support all sorts of dimensionality of data. So not only does it support vectors, but it also supports 2D matrices, 3D volumes, and so forth and so on. We have many customers using 4D and up as well. Uh, so you can simply create arrays in any dimension and index into them and perform computations across them for your application. It's really easy to manipulate uh, arrays in ArrayFire with standard subscripting uh, notation. So you can pull out entire spans of an array. Uh, you can pull out individual elements of an array. Or you can pull out patterns of indexing patterns across the data, uh, whether it be in two or three or, or, or ND. And so here are some examples of how to do that. Once you, again, have a variable de defined as an array, you can then, here we have arrays x and y, which we now plug into a standard mathematical expression where we're doing a, a vector multiply, a square root, a summation across the vector, and a, a, some scalar arithmetic. Uh, this application, in general, is a, is a simple application that's very popular in showing uh, GPU computing uh, fundamentals. And we're computing or estimating the value of pi with a simple uh, expression. ArrayFire is very good at uh, taking uh, simple math expressions and finding the best possible way to run that on the GPU. By declaring the, the output as a standard CPU float, that means that once this computation has been performed on the GPU, in order to store it into the variable pi, uh, it actually does transfer back to the CPU. And so it's simply through uh, data casting to the array uh, that you get to the GPU and then data casting back to uh, a float or a CPU variable that you return to the CPU. Similarly, as we showed in that C++ example, Python is supported, C is supported, and Fortran is supported. And each has its own uh, syntax, and each has its own way to initialize ArrayFire. But uh, all, all are available and documented on our website. With ArrayFire, not only do you get a very broad set of functions from image processing to signal processing, statistics and math functions, but you also get some advanced features like the G4 loop. G4 is a data parallel for loop, and to describe that, it's useful to look at uh, the difference between a standard for loop, uh, and so this is a standard for loop as you would see it, for instance, uh, in, in uh, C++ or, or any language, and you are going through this for loop and doing a matrix vector multiply. Similarly, in uh, 
in with jacket you can do a G for loop and all you do to change from a for loop to a G for loop is add the G in front of that loop and once you do that you're able to run all the bodies of all the loops simultaneously uh, in one pass so that you can get really fast execution of your code. So again just to pictorially describe what occurs with the different loops. In a for loop, it has to execute sequentially. So it takes iteration one and does a matrix vector multiply and stores the result in, in the output uh, data structure. Then it goes to iteration two. And finally, the CPU will go to iteration three, all sequentially. Uh, with G4, the, the goal is to do all of those simultaneously and, and, and take really advantage of the, the vast hardware available within every GPU. And so what you can do is you can think of G4 as stacking all of those iterations on top of each other, still each of the operations being functionally correct and producing valid results uh, that, are, that are expected from the loop. But the actual way in which it, it's done is that it's constructed so that you actually do that uh, vector matrix multiplication across all the uh, bodies of the, of, of the loop simultaneously and then store the result in one big chunk uh, out to the output of the full uh, sequence of, for loop, of the for loop. So you can think of G4 as syntactic sugar to write vectorized code in an iterative style. In other words, you can, a, a for loop is very nice and very common in programming because it, it's, it's very straightforward uh, expression of a computation and it makes a lot of sense to write code that way. Uh, the problem is, is that for loops are, by their very nature, supposed to run sequentially and so what G4 really does is it syntactically lets you write your code in that sequential style while simultaneously letting you exploit the parallelism so that it will run 10 to 100 times faster than you might get if you only ran uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the sequential nature of a CPU. Another feature of array fire that is really important for helping you accelerate code very simply is the ability within ArrayFire to do multi-GPU scaling. Uh, we'll talk about this later. Uh, ArrayFire is free for single GPU usage, but for multi-GPU usage it requires uh, ArrayFire Pro. So this feature is only available in ArrayFire Pro, but it's a very nice feature in that it lets you put this function device uh, anywhere you want within your code and then you pass that function device a scalar number which corresponds to the GPU in your system so if you have four GPUs in your system you can easily switch between device 0, 1, 2, and 3 and be able to queue up uh, work for each GPU so that you can uh, have all of those GPUs churning on computing your product uh, or your your uh, computation simultaneously. In this code, we're we're showing the usage of device inside of a for loop, uh, wherein the device function uh, for each iteration of that loop does a round robin. So on the first on the zeroth iteration, it goes to the zeroth GPU and assigns that FFT. Uh, function to be run on that zeroth GPU and while that FFT is running on the zeroth, zeroth GPU uh, the next body of the loop is scheduled to run on the first GPU and so forth on the second and third and and therefore you're able to quickly uh, uh, write your own code in a way that is able to scale across all the GPUs in your system with the addition of a single line of code. The bread and butter of ArrayFire is, in, its, is in, in, in all of its functionality. For image processing and convolutions and linear algebra reduction, sorting, really uh, we've seen so many different 
uh, applications run with the Rayfire that it's uh, that it's really most any application will can run with a set of functions that are available. And what you can do, each of these functions has been handcrafted by uh, Accelerize engineers over the last five years to to perform as 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 good as we possibly can on the various GPU hardware that is available in all of the various architectures. Uh, it's ex especially exciting with the new Kepler GPUs from NVIDIA that are uh, starting to come out this year uh, that uh, with Array Fire you'll be able to take advantage of uh, all of that uh, new hardware goodness that's coming out uh, in these uh, new devices this year. Array Fire has plenty of speed. Uh, we constantly are impressed uh, by benchmarks that those in the community are running and posting on the internet uh, of comparing Array Fire to other uh, performance libraries such as MKL, Eigen, IPP, and Armadillo. Uh, this, these sequence of slides just show that function by function across the board, Array Fire is going to give you performance speed up on things like convolutions and summations and sorting of vectors, you know, things that you wouldn't necessarily think that you could sort a vector uh, in a way that would be faster through parallelism than it would be uh, sequentially. But uh, but in fact, that's, that's exactly what GPUs uh, surprise you about time and time again, is that you can take your code, code that you think there's no way to accelerate, and time and time again we see uh, users just shocked at how fast they can run their code uh, if they if they plug in these functions, because it turns out that uh, with a lot of effort, uh, these functions have been designed to run extremely fast uh, and and run in parallel, even even when seemingly perhaps uh, there is no parallelism uh, to be extracted. There's a lot of the, you know, the alternative to using something like a Rayfire is to write your own versions of those kinds of functions, the, the reductions and the sorting and the convolutions and the image processing. And, and, and all, all of that takes just a ton of time. And, and often developers, uh, you know, get excited by writing these, reinventing the wheel, if you will. But there's a ton of cost associated with doing that. And a Rayfire is really meant to help eliminate those hidden costs of software development when you set out to write a GPU kernel that 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 array fire uh, you know we've gone through and undertaken all the costs uh, of porting and maintenance and documentation and testing and QA and we run we run millions of lines of QA code uh, on a on a very frequent basis to ensure the quality of the software. Rayfire also offers that this through this higher level interface, it offers something that's that's future proof. And by future proof, what I mean is that uh, independent of any future uh, modifications of the underlying hardware architectures, which continue to evolve and mature, uh, uh, people that use a Rayfire don't have to change their code from one generation of GPU hardware to the next. Uh, they simply uh, can take the same code, since it's written at a high level, and plug in the new versions of ArrayFire that support these advanced hardware features, and without any code modification, get full benefit of the of the enhancements of the new release, because we, we do that for you underneath the hood. Uh, so for instance, all current ArrayFire users, uh, when when uh, Kepler fully uh, arrives uh, and the new versions of CUDA that support it, uh, you will get to uh, just simply upgrade your Array Fire release and it, enjoy the uh, additional improvements that come through those devices. Array Fire has two licenses. Uh, the bulk of people using Array Fire today are using a free license. Uh, the free version is fully functional and fully performant. We don't uh, hamper it in any way. Uh, the only limitations are is that it only supports uh, a single GPU. 
So if you get a lot of success with one GPU and you want to scale up, then, then you need to go to Pro. It also requires an internet connection to a shared license. Uh, so we serve a, a, an unlimited shared free version license off of our website. And the, the, the free version of a Wraith Fire automatically connects to that license server uh, whenever you fire it up. But in order to connect, it needs the, the machine that's running the GPU needs to be connected to, to the internet. So that's the free version. Uh, and we, we encourage you to, that's available. You can click on right on our home page and download that uh, anytime. The professional version is then a dedicated license. It doesn't require any internet connection. It can use uh, multi-GPU. It also has some extra linear algebra features uh, from our friends at EM Photonics and their Kula package. Uh, those, those features built on top of Kula are available uh, there as well. At Accelerize, we also, uh, especially for the defense and intelligence community, have done a lot of uh, consulting kinds of projects. Uh, often we are hired to work on prototype projects. And other times we're hired to actually do end-to-end -end performance enhancing code for, for final deliverables. Uh, either way, we have a, a team of engineers that are ready uh, to assist you on any GPU projects that you may have. Uh, also, we offer training one to four day courses for CUDA and OpenCL. And uh, if you or your team is interested in, in getting trained up in the state of the art on GPUs, uh, we can do that as well. To, to, to close out, I want to share a, a Northrop Grumman a UAV imaging example. Uh, this example was an image processing example where they wanted to do some ground vehicle detection. Uh, as you might, might imagine, that's a, a very common problem that we see across various defense firms. Uh, this ground vehicle detection was taking four seconds with IPP, that's Intel Performance Primitive Enhanced, CPU code, so they'd actually already done a, a, a layer of software development effort to make it as fast as possible on the CPU, but they needed it to be 10 times faster than that uh, to get to be real time, and so they needed, needed it to run in 0.4 seconds. Uh, and they looked at their algorithm and, and basically felt that there were too many small image patches that that there was no way to really get good performance on the GPU because each of these small image patches, if you tried to run any GPU kernels on, on these small patches, they would just be, when you include the memory transfers and so forth, uh, they were just too small. They couldn't exploit much data parallelism and, and they were just not getting a good results with GPUs uh, on their own. But as I said before, in a lot of cases, stuff that seemingly appears to be not well suited for GPUs, uh, when you plug in a library that's that's been, you know, as developed and as matured as a Rayfire, you find that, you know, that people that that's all they do day in and day out is is focus on these kinds of functions and exploiting data parallelism, that they have figured out ways to make stuff faster. So in the case of Northrop Grumman, what they did is they, they used a combination of two solutions to actually get that code result. They got it the 10x performance improvement in under one month. And they did that through plugging in uh, both the Rayfire and Jackets because they had some uh, MATLAB code that they, that they were prototyping with. They used Jacket for that. And then when they wanted to deploy, uh, they used the Rayfire, the, the C++ library. And and all along the way, they were able to really accelerate their development effort because they didn't have to write any uh, CUDA code directly. Uh, they could leverage CUDA through the library and, and sort of avoid the, the software development time that it takes to write the lower level code. Um, they also used Accelerize Consulting. They, they had uh, particular things that they were specific to their algorithm that they wanted us to work on. And so they hired us to work on, on uh, some porting directly of their GPU algorithms. The combination of those two things uh, got them the results they wanted. I, I want to wrap up uh, talking about the options that are available today. Uh, the leader in GPU computing is NVIDIA. Uh, for a good reason, they have the, the CUDA technology with all sorts of uh, uh, 
energy and emphasis behind it today, and that CUDA is available uh, primarily for defense purposes. I, I believe people will be using the Tesla uh, products. Uh, those are specifically uh, targeted at high performance uh, computing and uh, and applications that are common in defense and intelligence community. Uh, for those that are doing some visual computing as well, where you have a graphics component, GeForce and Quadro cards are available. Uh, ArrayFire also includes, as far as I, I'm aware, the only uh, graphics library that couples CUDA computing with uh, the visualizations that are that give you uh, true GPU visual computing as well, and so you can use the graphics library on these uh, uh, Quadro and GeForce uh, GPUs. Uh, and then also uh, Tegra is very interesting. That's the mobile computing device coming out from NVIDIA, and and that's uh, in smartphones and tablets today, but also uh, is something that that uh, that people are looking to as uh, as going to be important for computing in sort of embedded embedded devices as well. So all of these are available uh, from Nvidia today. Uh, there are open CL options, uh, admittedly not as mature as as the CUDA options today, but uh, nonetheless uh, are available uh, on a, a variety of hardware options. AMD GPUs uh, primarily today uh, are an option for open CL. Uh, AMD or Intel CPUs can also run OpenCL. NVIDIA GPUs can run OpenCL as well, and uh, and a variety of FPGAs and uh, and other devices uh, uh, can support uh, the OpenCL spec today as well. In the coming weeks, we're going to be uh, traveling quite a bit and and available in in many cities across the U.S. and in Europe. And we uh, encourage you to come check us out if you're going to be at any of these. The next week we'll be at the SPIE Defense Con Conference in Baltimore. Uh, in early May, first week of May, we'll be at a Raytheon, Raytheon uh, uh, Information Systems Symposium in Tucson. Uh, we'll be at the NVIDIA GPU Technology Conference in May, and, and that's a great one that uh, we encourage you to attend in Santa Clara. Uh, We'll be at the City University of New York uh, HPC conference in, in New York in June, at the AMD Fusion Summit in Seattle in June, and also at the International Supercomputing Conference in, at, in June in Germany. So uh, if you're in any of those cities or happen to be attending any of those conferences, we in, uh, invite you to come check, check us out and, and come up and talk to us at our booth at each of those places. Uh, so we encourage you to get a Rayfire. Again, there's a, a free version for a single GPU. There's uh, no overhead to getting started with it. You can just download it, and, and uh, I'm going to show you now how to how to get started with it. Uh, there are a lot of prepackaged examples that you can run. Uh, we also invite you to join us in upcoming webinars. We every month in the on the 15th or or middle middle of the month we have a webinar. Next month will be optimization. With Jacket, so Jacket's the product uh, for interoperating with MATLAB, and the optimization functions that are available with Jacket let you do some really, uh, really cool uh, minimization problems and defining of functionals and minimizing those very, very quickly on the GPU. Those are also very common in defense uh, in the defense community as well. Uh, and then machine learning, which is also common in defense and intelligence, uh, machine learning webinar comes comes up. Uh, in June. You can register for those in the same place uh, that you registered for this webinar. Okay, with that I want to go ahead and close the slide deck and talk about ArrayFire. Let's run some examples and, and help you get started. So when you install ArrayFire, you get a directory structure that looks like this. Uh, you have documentation. Uh, in here, but the documentation is actually best easiest to get to by just clicking the index file there. And there's all sorts of the on the very first page examples for downloading and the requirements that are required for your system and tutorials to help you get started. Uh, it's also, I think, the tabs that I like to go to are are the categories tab, the categories tab lists all of the uh, functions by category. So you can search through here uh, data analysis, linear algebra, signal and image processing, sparse matrices, 
uh, and some scanning and other linear algebra uh, features, image processing, uh, signal processing, uh, just a lot of different kinds of things in here. You can search through those and find the functions that you need to get to get your application up and running. And the the examples are here as well. We're actually going to go into the uh, into the source code for these and compile and run some of these examples. Okay, so I think that's what I'll do next. If you're doing Python, you'll you'll want to go into the Python directory and and uh, and look at this. This is all the stuff specific to Python. Okay, so if I go into the examples, uh, one of the easiest examples is the template example. And to open an example, you just double click on the Microsoft Visual uh, Studio solution file. Okay, so here's the, the template example. Uh, it, it does the simple stuff of including your header and using the namespace. And inside of the namespace, there's a, a useful function called the info function that will print information about the GPU uh, configuration of your system to your screen. So I'm going to go ahead and, and run this. And there it is. So on this system, uh, we're using ArrayFire version 1.0. Uh, it's got uh, the CUDA Toolkit version 4.0. And this is the NVIDIA driver version. It has two GPUs, both Quadro 6000s. Uh, and it's telling me that I'm currently using the GPU 0 for this application. Of course, there's nothing else in my application except for the simple uh, info printout. It also tells me how much memory is, a, is free and available uh, on the current GPU. So uh, this info function is helpful when you're getting up and running and making sure that you're using uh, the correct features of your system. You can also use the info function within the body of your program for uh, sort of debugging and diagnostic purposes. Uh, to, uh, I like to use it to see which GPU is currently uh, being used and print that to the screen. It's a helpful function. Okay, so that's the template function. <coughs> Uh, the pi function that we saw in the slide deck is also here. So I'm going to click on the 2010 Visual Studio solution file for the pi function. I'm going to do this as uh, release x64, open the source code. So same, same stuff here. Uh, this is the code that we saw in the slides where we're, again, creating an array X and an array Y, and then we're returning uh, the result as a double uh, of this arithmetic expression. And uh, let's go ahead and, and compile and run this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to rebuild this one. Okay, so you can see the GPU uh, took five thousandths of a second to five milliseconds to estimate uh, pi, and the CPU took uh, you know almost eight tenths of a second to do the same thing. So uh, so even for something as simple as is that calculation, the GPU just gives uh, tremendous speed ups. Okay. Now let's try something a little more, uh, a little more fancy. For this one, let's do a multi-GPU example. I'll open the solution file for that. Okay. So, in this code again, using the namespace AF, uh, we're using uh, the device set function, that's the one that is going to uh, toggle between GPU 0 and GPU 1. I have, remember I have uh, two GPUs in this, in this particular system. 
and then it's going to do uh, some arithmetic and and uh, looks like a couple of different operations here. Let's just go ahead and see what it spits out to the screen. Uh, let's see. Run that. Yes. Okay. This is a multi GPU matrix vector multiply. Uh, so we're just simply doing the uh, a matrix vector multiply, and I think we're running uh, for some of the matrices, we're running it on some GPUs, and for other matrices, we're running it on different GPUs. And so it's uh, it's able to do uh, this the this matrix operation in again uh, seven milliseconds. So uh, this one we don't have a the ability to do a similar CPU comparison, uh, but uh, but it's designed to basically if you read through the code, you can sort of learn how to simply use that device that function to uh, to do multi GPU computing and. And so we were able to leverage both the GPU zero and GPU one in this in this computation. Okay. Now let's do uh, something a little more defense specific. So we have an optical flow uh, example. Optical flow is. One of the most uh, one of the most standard algorithms in image processing, uh, especially in sort of video image processing, where you want to track an object in a video stream. Optical flow can help you find information in those frames that indicate the flow or movement of an object in in the stream. In this function, and in this code. Uh, we're defining some three by three derivative kernel. We're defining uh, a dx, a dy, and a dt variable as arrays. So these are again our GPU variables. And then we're going to take these guys and uh, along with the incoming array images, and we're going to do some convolutions. So convolutions, uh, a proper combination of these convolutions with the derivative kernels is going to give us the differences that we need to compute that optical flow. And so this is this is a more involved example. Uh, it's using synthetic imagery. So we have, we're basically taking two different frames, uh, one with a circle located at the left of the image, one with a circle located at the center of the image, and we're, we're going to take the, we're going to compute the difference between those two frames, the optical flow difference between those two frames. Let's run this. So it's doing horn chunk optical flow. That's the name of the uh, particular algorithm. And here it's computing uh, that that optical flow. This is our circle left. This is our circle center. And for about 10 seconds, you saw the evolution of of this computation to compute the the heat map or the the indication of of how the one frame, it, the circle in the one frame moves. Uh, in the subsequent frame. Okay, so these were running at in the 200s of iterations per second, which is which is really really good. Uh, uh, you know, CPUs typically run at uh, in the tens of frames per second, so this is uh, extremely fast. Okay. There are several other examples in here of uh, of some finite difference, time difference equations, uh, some more sort of image processing demos that you can run doing histograms. Uh, histograms are very popular uh, in image processing as well, and uh, we encourage you to to check all of those out. Okay, at this uh, point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and see if we have any questions. Uh, feel free to ask any questions that you may have about uh, Accelerize, ArrayFire, uh, or anything re related to GPU computing, and we're happy to, to field your questions. 
Let's see here. Okay, I see a question here. When will the next uh, array fire release be? And that's imminent. Uh, array fire 1.1 is going to uh, come out a little later this month, and it will support the new version of CUDA, CUDA 4.1, as well as many other features and functions. Uh, for those of you that use uh, Fortran, it, it'll have a big uh, improvement for, for our Fortran uh, version and uh, and just all sorts of functional uh, enhancements as well. So, so we're excited to share that with you. Okay, next question. Okay. The question is how to transfer looks like basically boils down to how do you transfer memory from the GPU to the CPU. And again, uh, in, a, in a ray fire, let's go back to that. Right here. In a ray fire, all data transfer is done through data casting. So by casting a, a matrix to an array, uh, you're indicating that you want that information to be sent from the, from the CPU, if it's in the CPU, to the GPU. In this case of, of creating a random uh, vector, it actually, the, the data never, ori never originated on the CPU. It, it actually originates directly on the GPU, and that saves some memory transfer time uh, in, in this example. But you can also do functions for uh, assigning into arrays from CPU variables, and those functions, uh, uh, such as, you know, there's some host, host functions where you can uh, move from host to device and from device to host and so forth. Uh, if you want to get back to the CPU again, it's through data casting. So, as an example, was this line of code where where you can move back to the float, uh, the CPU float from the GPU. Okay. Uh, the next question is. Okay. The next question is, how do you interoperate? Uh, let's just talk about how do you interoperate with CUDA. So. Uh, a lot of ArrayFire is designed to be uh, directly compatible with any other CUDA code that you may be writing. And so if you have your own CUDA kernels, you can simply, uh, or own CUDA data structures, you can pass those, those device pointers directly into ArrayFire functions. And likewise, any output of any, any ArrayFire array, you can take the pointer from that ArrayFire array and pass it into any custom CUDA kernel that you may be writing yourself. And so it, it's meant to be fully symbiotic with the full CUDA ecosystem, whether whether it be uh, your own custom CUDA kernels or whether it be any other uh, CUDA-based library. Uh, it's all synergistic with, with one another. OK, with that, I think. Uh, I think we've answered most of the, uh, the topics uh, in these questions. We thank you for your participation, and we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you.